And here's another example of the thin film. In this case, we have, like, let's say, a puddle of water. And on top of that, there's a thin layer of oil, and there's air above there, and light is shining onto the puddle. And sometimes, as you might have noticed before, when there's oil on top of a puddle, you see all kinds of different colors, different rings of colors shining everywhere. And so let's say that in our example, there's an observer looking down at a particular spot on the oil and sees yellow light being reflected off the film. And the question is, how thick should the oil film be in order for the observer to see yellow light being reflected back if sunlight is entering upon this, uh, this puddle? And of course, the sunlight will then have all the various colors of the rainbow uh, distributed throughout it and only the yellow light is being reflected. So what is the thickness of the oil? So again, the first thing you do is say, okay, that means that the second ray that goes all the way through the oil and is reflected off the boundary between oil and water, uh, that has to travel an extra distance, and it looks like the extra distance is equal to twice the thickness of the, uh, of the oil. And you say, well, wait a minute, that angle doesn't look like it's more than twice the thickness, and yes, it, it is, but I just drew it like that so it's easier to see. Let's just assume that these angles are so small that we don't have to worry about them. So we can say that the extra distance traveled is equal to twice the thickness of the oil, and of course, for yellow light to be reflected, you want the phase difference for that yellow light to be zero. In other words, you want the extra distance travel equal to be a full wave, a wavelength, or two wavelengths, or three wavelengths, or so forth. However, before we go there, Let's take a look at these boundaries and determine if there was a phase shift. And notice a phase shift when light is reflected off a boundary will always occur when the index of refraction on the other side is greater than where the light came from. In this case, it came from air, and when the boundary was on the other side is oil, so the index of refraction is greater, and we can say, yes, there was a phase shift at this particular boundary. Then we get to the other side, where we have the boundary between oil and water, and here the index of refraction on the other side is smaller than it is where the light came from. So here, there will not be a phase shift, and so we say, we write the letter N for no. So yes, there was a phase shift there, no, there was, a, there was no phase shift there. Which means that the first beam that gets reflected already has an immediate 180 degree flip, or a half wavelength flip. The second beam does not have a wavelength shift. That means if the extra distance travel was zero, the two waves would already be 180 degrees out of phase. So let's write that down for t equals zero, for zero thickness, then the, then the, the um, shift in the wavelength or the phase difference, I should say, maybe that's a better way to say it, the phase difference is already a half a wavelength. And the reason again, why is it different by half a wavelength? Because there is, there is a phase shift on the first boundary and no phase shift on the next boundary. So even if T was infinitely small, they would already be 180 degrees out of phase or half wavelength out of phase. Now, to get the condition for the two waves to come together here and have constructive interference for yellow light, you want the phase difference to be a full wavelength. That means you only need to make up the other half a wavelength, which means the extra distance traveled must therefore only be a half a wavelength through the oil instead of a full wavelength. So that means that twice the thickness of the film must be equal to a half a wavelength. Not only that, since the light is traveling through oil and the index of refraction is not equal to 1, we have to make sure that we take into account that the wavelength will be different as it travels through the oil. So this will be equal to 1 over, or 1 lambda. Mm, let me just write it like this. So. Um, well, let's write it like this, one-half lambda divided by n, where n in the, in, is the index of refraction of the oil. Now we're ready to go. So now we determine that the extra distance travel should only be a half a wavelength, and is the wavelength of the light as it travels through the oil. And then we set those two equal to each other, so 2t is equal to one-half lambda over n. And again, the reason why it's one-half, because we had already a phase difference caused by the shift here and no shift over there. Solving this for t, we get t is equal to lambda divided by 4n, because 2 times 2 is 4. And so when we plug in the numbers, we're looking for yellow light, 500 nanometers, which is 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. And 4 times the index of refraction of the medium that it travels through, which is oil, 1.4. And here's my calculator. 500 e to the 9 minus divided by 4 divided by 1.4 equals and we have a thickness of 89 nanometers, which is, of course, 89 
times 10 to the minus 9 meters. So that's the thickness of the oil right at the spot where the observer is looking and that causes yellow light to be reflected and not transmitted into the water. And that's how you do a thin film problem like that.